Hi, I'm Travis Montague, and this is Conversation Nation. Today, I'm joined by Jennifer Lee and Rayoub Al Dumedi, who were both featured in the new documentary, The Emoji Story, that's coming on Apple TV on December 22nd. Jennifer Lee is a former New York Times journalist. She's also a producer of on The Emoji Story and several other films, the founder of Emoji Nation, a grassroots group focused on emoji representation, and is a vice chair of the Unicode Emoji Subcommittee. Rayu Aldumedi is currently a student at Stanford and as a young teenager petitioned for the creation of the hijab emoji, which was accepted by the Unicode Consortium. Rayu was recognized as one of Time Magazine's 30 most influential teens. The emoji story explores the history of emoji, the quest for more representation in visual communication, and the importance of visual to conversations today. Welcome. Jennifer and Rayu. So, you know, my question uh, to you, Jennifer, when did you become so passionate about advocating for emoji and visual content? Yeah, so for me, I mean, so it was twofold, right? One, which is this idea that I, I felt very indignant when I kind of saw the Unicode <laughs> page of all, all the members, that it was, you know, these large US multinational tech companies are paying $18,000 a year at that time to like be full voting members of Unicode. And then like the three that were not US um, multinational tech companies but had full voting power were a German software company called SAP, a Chinese telecom company called Huawei, and then the government of Oman. But, you know, tech controls so much of how we communicate these platforms, you know, whether or not it's, um, you know, what shows up in your feed, um, you know, the, the the kind of alerts that you get that I really felt like there needed to be the voice of the people in the room. And then the other part was um, around the same time, I know this is a little bit hard to remember um, because the emoji keyboard has evolved so much, but if you looked at the keyboard, there were many ways to be like, uh, like roles for like men emoji to have, like uh, things to do, like, you know, you could be Santa Claus, you could be a police officer, you could be like a Buckingham Palace guard, oddly, you could be a detective. But as of 2015, 2016, you know, the only thing that you could be as a female were princess, bride, dancer, and playboy bunny. And I just felt like that said a lot. Well, first of all, the the idea that those were the only four like, like ways for women to represent themselves in today's age, and age seems crazy. Um, you know, even for us, like one of the things that we at, at Holler, as a producer of stickers, gifts, those type of content, like we have this rule of three where we're like, well, you want an example that represent that can represent many, few, and some. Like you wanna, but for that same concept, we should try to represent it in as many ways as possible so we're not in on un, un, unintentionally inputting bias on what we believe that this scenario looks like. Ray, I was gonna I was gonna switch to you here. So you were a young teen when you set out to do to get the hit job emoji proof. So what was that experience like? So, well, to put it into perspective, I went from not writing anything more complex than a lab report in biology to a proposal <laughs> that led CNN and BBC to knock at my door. So it was like, I'm definitely a, a world shifting perspective uh, on my end. But yeah, at that time, I, I was, I don't know if I was, I think I was ready for for everything that came out of it, but it was so incredible to see the response once it was approved in, I think it was November 2017, right? But it's so wild to use it now or like see it randomly pop up in random people's like captions or bios like, whoa, that that was like four years, three years of work. It's so amazing, <laughs> but it's, it's so incredible. Like that, the whole trajectory of it has been so, so amazing. You know, why do you believe that people find it so important to have this representation in their keyboards. Um, I mean, you're, I'm sure you're very familiar with this, but you know, there's this constant debate in Hollywood and you know, television about like big screen representation in the big screen. And, you know, but there's also the kind of diversity that is important in the small screen, especially probably in terms of the hours that we spend on our devices relative to like looking at TV is probably roughly equivalent. So seeing um, something that represents yourself in the preloaded, pre-curated, you know, digital communications medium is your ability, kind of represents your ability of being seen. I just have to look at my cousins who are on their phone, I think, more than they even watch TV. 
And when that is the primary language of communication and that doesn't include them, that that is a big gap. So they see like all different types of people, but not them. And it's, it, you know, some people might trivialize it like, oh, it's just emojis. But emojis are what they used to be like six years ago when they weren't such a big mode of communication and weren't on weren't used by so many young kids. So I think that's that's the biggest point that comes to me is that. Um, all right, so let's talk about the emoji story. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask a kind of a similar question to what my last one, but what inspired you to create this documentary and why now? As I kind of started tumbling down the emoji uh, rabbit hole, I was like, oh, this is like an amazing world, like all the personalities and like something. So I just texted Ian Cheney, who was the director of the Search for General So, and just asked him, like, how do you feel about emoji? And so he had just, I think he was like, just about to become a dad or like had just become a dad. And so he he was like, sounds great. See me in like, you know, a couple months. And actually we started this before Ray Youth uh, emailed in her proposal. Cause we, so we were just like, oh, we should do something. And you know, like, how do we do it? Maybe we do small vignettes. It was very kind of amorphous at that point. And I remember when um, the proposal came in from Ray Youth and I was like, I, I think I emailed our directors and I was like, I have I have one of the subjects for our documentary. I was like, yes. So so with the documentary, uh, what do you hope to what do you hope its impact will be? What what do you hope it will do for the future of emoji and visuals overall? Yeah, so for us there are a couple of things that I, I think the, the documentary does. It looks at the role that technology plays in our ability to represent ourselves. And I think it 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 forces a hard look um, by the technology industry sort of on itself. Then there's also the idea that you as an individual can make a difference, which I think is um, hard, especially during the you know, tumult of society right now, to sort of um, feel. So I think in some ways it's an inspiration. You know, another thing is it, it, it kind of asks um, what is the future of communication and this this idea of you know how representative do we want in this kind of curated preloaded um, like linguistic -y type visual medium to be and I, I think ideally people come out you know with this in this with this experience of what I call edutainment like they were entertained but they also feel smarter what do you hope for the future of you know, visual communication I think <laughs> You know, some form of accessibility to how we use our phones and how we see our phones and seeing an adaptability to that and not just have a static size, one size fits all because, you know, not everyone's experience on the phone is the same. And, you know, honoring the fact that emojis are a big part of people's identity and how they view themselves, I think is a good, good start as well. Because, yeah, like we mentioned, there's so much, so much power in seeing yourself be visualized in a technology that is so domestic that everyone has it and is so widespread so i think that's those are my two goals for the visual communication i couldn't agree with you more i mean i was excited for this segment it didn't disappoint so i'm 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 so thankful for you and rayu coming on and, and and talking to our viewers about this we're excited about but I, I i enjoyed the emoji story i'm excited i recommend that you check it out and uh, thank you so much for everything that you're doing, both of you. Uh, keep being emoji activists. I will add that to my my title as well. And um, you know, we're excited about where the future of this space goes.